Greetings. Museo Egizio. You're looking at the Sapyrus or Cyperus Papyrus. Let's find out about this papyrus. Papyrus? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's do it this way. Papyrus with spells protecting from serpents and remedies to heal the eyes and extracts and extract fish bones. Cyprus Papyrus, Middle Kingdom, 11th to the 13th dynasty, between 1980 and 17 B, 1700 BC. Spell protecting from serpents. Stand back, serpent living on the hill, reptile living in the bush. Broken, on your, broken are your teeth, annihilated your poison. Remedy for the eyes. If Horus will not be blind, his damage will not exist. So then I shall not become blind. I shall not be damaged. His eyes of mine will see. To be uttered on water and dough, rubbing them on the eyes in the morning. Translation by Alessandro Roccati. It's funny because there is a story in the Bible about someone rubbing something on someone's eyes. And that person was blind, and after he rubbed that thing on his eyes, then he could see. And the person who performed that was Jesus, Jesus Christ. I'm not claiming that they were inspired by this to come up with that story. Now here, we are told about magic, magic or crisis management. Words are important, especially when we try to understand and define Egyptian culture, which is so distant from us in space and time. The Egyptian word heka, for example, is normally translated with magic. It feels nice because I told you so, and I'm not the only one, I'm not the first one, but this is so you can tell that it was accurate so far. However, the concept it expresses is hardly comparable to our notion of magic, which usually has negative implications, being associated with superstitious subcultures and defining opposition to religion. For the Egyptians, Heka was an integral part of religious thought, as it represented the energy employed by the primordial God to create the world and maintain the cosmic balance between order and chaos. Order being Ma'at, chaos being its effect. Heka was a super supernatural force that all the gods possessed, but which, to a lesser degree, also belonged to kings and the deceased and could be evoked and controlled through specific spells, rituals, or objects. Even by common people, this force was employed in substance to prevent or manage crises typical of passages from one state to another, birth, illness, death. And finally, I'm showing you some clappers, which are ritual winds and fragments of clapper terminating in a hand made of hippopotamus tusk made of ivory from the Middle Kingdom between 1900 and 1700 BCE.